You know, the reason that many of you all continue to struggle with porn and masturbation is because of that right there. And no, I am not being nasty right now. I'm not doing a porn shoot by sticking my tongue out. What I'm trying to show you is this member of your body, the tongue, is responsible for many of your relapses. Now, what do I mean in particular? Well, the Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it would eat the fruit thereof. In other words, what I am saying to you all is you keep relapsing or you have relapsed because you have spoken those words over yourself. Folks, words have creative power. There's a there's a creative energy, if you will, behind the words that you speak. And so when you say things, although they may appear to be innocent in nature, you say stuff like, I'll never get over this. I'm going to always struggle with this for the rest of my life. There's no hope for me. How many of you all, if you, if you just be honest for a second, just be honest for about two seconds and ask yourself, have I ever said any things, anything like this or anything of that nature like that to myself? Have you all even said it in jest? Okay, gave you two seconds to think about that. Now, if you have, that may be the root of your problem. That may be the root of your issue because spiritually, spiritually, you have violated a principle. And that principle is called going against the law of the spirit of your tongue. Life or death, as I said in the beginning, are in the power of this right here. You can either create greatness with that, or you can create destruction, put your life on the course of destruction with that right there. And no, I'm not telling you to be a wishful thinker, but what I am telling you is that you have to really watch what you say, especially in the process of you overcoming porn and masturbation. Even in the times, folks, that you relapse, you don't speak words of defeat. You speak words of victory. You say, for example, let's say you messed up. Give you a practical example. Let's say this morning you saw something that you weren't supposed to see. In the past, and I'm saying in the past right now because you're watching this and we're future minded, right? We want, I see you as a victorious overcomer. So in the past, you would look at porn or you would masturbate and you would say to yourself, I'm so filthy, nasty. I would never be able to change. This is always going to be. But now what I'm telling you is you say, you know what, God, forgive me for doing what I did. It was wrong. It was filthy. It was detestable. But thank God that I'm an overcomer because of what Christ did at the cross. See, what I've effectively done is I've admitted my wrongdoing, right? I've repented of it, but I also placed it on the place that yoke, that burden. I spoke into the atmosphere. God, I am putting that yoke on you. See, so, so many of you say, well, Donna, I don't understand why should I do that? Well, it's a spiritual principle. Christ said that to he said to take his yoke upon you and learn from him. In other words, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. In other words, I want you, I'm giving you the responsibility, my friend, of putting your life circumstances, admitting what you're going through. And I want you to tell me that, and I want you to give me the responsibility to help you. But in order for me to help you, you cannot be prideful. And so when you speak that out of your mouth, you are giving Christ, you're giving God permission to assist you in your own recovery. But if I just kept it in, I didn't say anything or I said something that was negative, then my situation is only going to get worse. So how does it look again? It looks like this. God, you know what? I masturbated this morning. I watched some porn this morning. I should not have watched it. It was wrong. It was filthy. It was detestable. Lord, forgive me. Lord, give me the wisdom 
to not do this. Lord, show me where I went wrong at. Show me the conversation that I may have gotten into that, that opened up the door for me to relapse. Show me what I can do to overcome this addiction for those who, you know, whatever, just start. Show me what I need to do. Lord, your word says for me to take your yoke upon you to learn from you, Lord. So I'm doing exactly what you told me to do. I'm admitted. I've admitted that I'm wrong. I've admitted what I did was disgusting. I've admitted that my behavior was wrong, Lord. And I ask you to have mercy upon me, have mercy because of what you did at the cross. And I, and I, and I accept your mercy. I accept your forgiveness. I accept it, Lord God. And I ask you to give me grace. Lord, you said that you give grace to the to, 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 that you resist the proud. And Lord, I'm not being proud. But you also said you give grace to the humble. That's why I'm humbling myself upon you. And I want to learn from you. And I'm asking you for your help. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm an overcomer because of what you said at the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, what did I do in that prayer? I put it on Christ. And I said, I said and I spoke out of my mouth the way that he sees me. It ain't got, it don't have a, 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 a nothing to do with how you see your, you have to start to see yourself the same way that he sees you. And you have to speak to yourself the same way that Christ sees you. He sees you as an overcomer, a victorious overcomer because of what he did at the cross. Now, just use balance. Now, I hear some of you say, well, what about the people that keep doing it? We're not talking about people that are willfully doing it. And sometimes people willfully do stuff because they're bound by will, by satanic forces, and they have to be delivered, right? That's a whole other conversation. But what I am talking about are the people that have repentant hearts who, who want to do right, who want to change, who have repented before God. I'm telling you, this is how you handle it. You start to see yourself the same way that Christ sees you at the cross. And I'm telling my friends, he sees you as more than a conqueror. He sees you as a king. He sees you as a priest. That's how he sees you. Now, you have to not only see yourself like that, but you have to speak how he sees you. And that's important because your words have creative power. And the more that you say it, the more that you believe it, and the more that you end up creating that energy in your life and you become the thing that you say that you have spoken all these years. The many, the many of you keep falling in porn addiction, masturbation, XYZ, you name it, is because you keep speaking your failure and you're not speaking the success of Christ. Yes, you messed up. Yes, you've been frail. But guess who has not messed up, baby? Christ hasn't messed up. And so you have to attach your success to the vine. And Christ is the vine and you are the branch. Because he's successful, because he's more than a conqueror, guess what, my friend? You are more than, more than a conqueror. Because he's a king, you are a king. Because he's victorious, you are victorious. And you got to speak that. And you have to believe that. And over time, guess what happens? Your confession, the words that you have spoken out of your mouth end up lining up with your behavior. And your behavior becomes who you are. And and that who you are in the spirit world is Christ sees you sitting in heavenly places with him. So who you are in the spirit world becomes manifested in the flesh. It becomes manifested. You end up becoming a walking embodiment of the manifestation of the words that you have spoken because you have spoken them. And that can either happen with death, speaking curses. Or it can happen with life. Speaking blessings. So blessings are just empowerments to prosper. So what I am telling you folks is to watch the, excuse me, watch the words that you say. Stop saying stuff in jest. You have a watch your demons that watch you. We call, we have guardian angels, right? And we have watcher spirits, which are the, the demonic equivalent of 
of guardian angels. They literally watch everything that you say. That's why it's good to listen more. Got two ears and one mouth and speak less because so many of you out are in bad situations in your life right now because of that right there. Because of that tongue. You said stuff and said, well, oh God, I was only joking. Guess what? The spirit world doesn't just only joke. You said it. Those things are being activated. So pray and ask God to, to eradicate the seeds that have been sown as a result of the words that you have spoken out of your mouth. Many of you guys are struggling with spirit spouses right now. Spirit husbands, spirit wives, go back and watch the video and get the course. You know what I'm talking about. Because of words that you've spoken out of your mouth. Your mouth. You, you struggle with masturbation because of words you've spoken out of your mouth. You, you said things like, oh, man, I just got to have her. Man, I'd do anything in the world to get with her. You saw certain porn stars on things, and uh, on videos, and you're like, man, I just got to have me some of that. I, man, I'd do anything to be with a woman like that. That's my wife. All kinds of perverted stuff. Some of you girls, you young ladies, man, I wish my husband was, man, dude, if my husband had a penis like so-and-so in this porn video or like my dildo could work it the way I could work it, I would be a happy woman. And so now you wonder why you're having all kinds of sex problems in your relationship. You can't be pleased because you spoke in that profession. You said, lady, you said that you want a man that's shaped like a horse. You said that you wanted a man who could work your, 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 your body like you work your dildo. You said that. You spoke that. And so now you here you are married, you're in a relationship, and you don't get gratification out of sex. And you only only gratification you get is from yourself because of those words that you spoke five years ago. And not only you spoke, but many of you guys keep saying the stuff. And so whatever you keep saying, it ends up growing. It's like a, having a seed and planting and, and planting that seed and you're watering it and you keep saying it and saying it and saying it. So you keep watering it and watering it and watering it. And now all of a sudden, manifestation in the physical realm. And you're trying to figure out, God, why is this happening to me? Why, why are all the women that I'm attracting are whorish? Why are all the men I'm attracting uh, are dogish and 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 yeah they they got big fifteen inch schlongs and they cheat on me and they're nasty and they're filthy? Well, because you spoke those words years ago, sister. Now you're a cat lady. You got cats and you don't understand why you don't have a good relationship because of the words you spoke. But you know what, my friend, fret not, repent. That's it. Repent. Ask God to come into your life. Ask God to forgive you for the words that you've spoken. Every single neg negative words you've spoken. Every single negative covenant that you created. Remind Christ that he died on the cross for you to give you, to make you a new creation. That the old things have passed away. All things have become new. And part of that is newness of life. Getting rid of old soul ties. Old attachments. D you deserve that. You are you are rightful heir to that. Many of you all are struggling because demons have squatted in your home. They're not just going to get out, even though they don't have the legal right to. They're going to stay there because you don't know that they have a right to get out. So it's like, okay, you know, he ain't kicked me out, even though I'm not, I'm really not supposed to be here. I'm going to stay here because he hasn't kicked me out yet. And he don't and he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know the legal rights. So I'm gonna sit here. Just somebody kick me out. I'm just chill and order cable, put lights on, do the stuff that squatters do in people's homes, right? That's many of your issues. So anyway, folks, I love you guys. I hope that cleared a lot of stuff up for you. If you want more informative tips and information on what you, my friends, can do to overcome porn and masturbation, go to www.pornaddictshelp.com, www.pornaddictshelp.com. Big baby. I love you guys. And I'll, as usual, please like, like the page, share the content because there may be somebody out there who, you know, they don't want to do, do courses. They just, they just want to just watch these YouTube videos and that's practically, that's perfectly fine, but they need to know that they exist. And we need to really get to a point of helping one another out and sharing this content 
because there's other people out there that are really struggling too as well and that really need the help and that they need to know that they're a victorious overcomer in Christ, right? So like, share the page, subscribe to the channel, uh, check me out, if you will, cash up, uh, dollar sign, D Brown 1906. I love you guys. May God bless you. Peace.